Hey, I'm Isaac from Opsa.co, and in this video, I'll rank all the accounting practice management systems in the market. Not only the one our clients or previous clients we have worked with use, but literally all I could find. So if you're in the market for an upgrade, stay tuned to learn whether the biggest names in the space are actually the best tools, what features each tool has or doesn't have, and what are the biggest offenders that I would never recommend. Let's start actually with the simple criteria I took to account to rank some of these tools. Effectively, I'm listing them for ease of use and setup. How easy are they to just use on a regular basis and set up initially? How integration friendly are they? Meaning, is it if you wanted to integrate it with other tools, do you have options available, whether it's native integrations, but also things like local tools like Zapier or potentially a public API that you can leverage? Do they have a client portal and a client experience? How good is that experience for the client if they interact with that tool at any given point? Do you have reporting specific the reporting for your own internal operational KPIs that are often produced as a result of all the work, all the different staff you have, and it gives you a lot of visibility into your firm and how everyone's performing. The fifth, it's team collaboration. Do you have email integrated? Do you have the ability to comment and ensure that work gets done and kind of keep the communication and collaboration within the tool itself? if at all possible. And last but not least, the value to price discrepancy, which is what's the cost of the tool and relative to what it offers, how good is it or not? For all of these criteria, I'll be using a simple zero, one, or two score. So if it's zero, it's because it doesn't do that at all or does it very poorly. If it's a one, it means like it has some features around that, so it does okay. If it goes above or beyond and it's pretty good or among the best in the industry, then I would give it a plus two. So ultimately we have a score out of 12. If they make it a 12, it's like an S tier or like super good. If it's 10 or 11, we'll give it an A tier. If it's eight or nine, we'll give it a B tier. If it's six or seven, we'll give it a C tier. And anything less than S, it's, you know what? So disclaimer, this is not a perfect scoring system. You may value other things or give more weight to certain factors. So I'm equally giving weight to all of these things. So take the final scores with a grain of salt, okay? Let's get started with the first tool, Canopy. Ease of use and setup, two. Integration friendly, one. Client portal and experience, two. Reporting, one. Team collaboration, two. Value to price discrepancy, one. For the total score of the nine, or it be. It's actually a pretty solid product and app, both for the firm and for the client. It has a good-ish email feature, not necessarily work class, but can get the job done. And it has an API that, although it's not the most robust and it doesn't really have as much as I would like to or, or as much as others have, it exists. So it allows you to integrate with other tools when appropriate. Second app, Financial Sense. Ease of use and setup, two. Integration friendly, two. Client portal and experience, Two, reporting, one, team collaboration, two, and value of price discrepancy, one, for a score of A. So pretty solid app. It's an app that has grown very quickly over the last five or so years, taking a lot of the market and I think for a good reason. I wish their API was strong. I know they're working on it, but it's still not there yet compared to other ones. The email tools are decent. Those could be better too, but overall it's only an app that's pretty loved by the accounting community overall. So I think it's a well-deserved uh, A. Third app, Firm360. Ease of use and setup, two. Integration friendly, two. Client portal and experience, one. Reporting, one. Team collaboration, one. And value to price discrepancy, one. For a total score, of eight or a B. If you are a Office 365 slash Outlook firm, you can integrate email with it. Honestly, it's a pretty simple interface. It's not a tool that's trying to be everything for everyone. And I find the interface quite simple and easy to get started with. And in terms of integrations, they do integrate with Zapier and they have an API that you can access by request. So for me, well deserved score as well. App number four, Jetpack Workflow. Ease of use and setup, one. Integration friendly, one. Client portal and experience, one. Reporting, one. Team collaboration, two. And value to price discrepancy, two. For a total score of eight or a B. Again, a tool that gives you good value for money, decent at many things, not particularly impressive uh, by any means. I've met with the founder, a good guy. 
It's been around for probably, I don't know, six, seven years at this point, maybe more. So it's a tool that we've had firms that have used it in the past and they were very happy with it. So it has its pros and cons. App number five, Carbon is of use and setup. One, integration friendly. Two, client portal and client experience. One, reporting. Two, team collaboration. Two, and value the price discrepancy. One for a total score of nine or a B. I'd say Carbon's probably one of the best all rounders. It's one of those tools that's like pretty good at most things, although not necessarily like world class at a particular thing. I like to say like Carbon's almost always a sensible choice for most firms in most circumstances. It's kind of like the Prius of accounting practice management systems. Like you wouldn't necessarily suggest it's, it's a bad choice for pretty much anyone. If email, it's at the core of your business, they probably have the most robust, you know, time tested email email triage feature for email to be the center or if where the requirements from your clients come through where everything's kind of like distributed from there. So if that's something that you resonate with and you think you benefit from, definitely check them out. App number six, Mango, ease of use and setup. One, integration friendly, zero. Client portal and experience, one. Reporting, one. Team collaboration, one. Value discrepancy, one. For a total score of five or the crap here. I'm sorry guys, you could do better, but it's quite a day space on this score. App number seven, Uku, ease of use and setup. Two, integration friendly. One, client portal and experience. Two, reporting. Two, team collaboration. Two, and value discrepancy. One, for a total score of 10 or an A. Actually, I was pretty surprised by the features of this tool and how beautifully designed it is. I think that it's clearly, it was clearly built by you know, professionals, actually the co-founder is a product designer, which doesn't really surprise me because often we hear a lot of practice management systems say that, oh, it's built by accountants for accountants. And then the interface sucks and you wonder why. I think the last one we mentioned, maybe an example of that. In terms of Uku, as it relates to integrations is something we care a lot about. They have Zapier coming this year, supposedly, and have an API available. So that was a surprising for me to learn as well. And I think the reason they're not as popular in the US and Canada, or maybe you you haven't heard of it before is because they're European is a European team. Uh, but honestly, I think it's a tool that more US, Canada and other countries should take a deeper look into because it, it, it's pretty solid. App number eight, count. Ease of use and setup, one. Integration friendly, zero. Client portal experience, one. Reporting, two. Team collaboration, one. And value discrepancy, one for the total score of six. Or C. So actually, we recently were born a client that uses count and it has a lot. I'll say that. So I'll give them credit for that. But it looks like both the user interface and the back end, they've just been adding things on top of things. Like, guys, it's not acceptable to have like 27 tabs in your homepage. You can't get a, you know, user experience designer to redesign your whole interface, make things easier to use, better organize things. I think that would be a good investment now with your recent round of funds. So despite having a lot of like built-in reporting features and some email integrations, I'll still give it a two on the reporting side because it has a lot of critical quantity, but actually I think the quality of those reports could improve. The client we onboarded that's using count, actually the reporting they wanted to build a separate reporting capability, which is what we're helping them do precisely because of that. Despite the amount of reports they have, they didn't feel it met their needs. And I'll say I give it a zero in integration friendly, but those guys have been kind enough to like provide us access to the database on the back end that has allowed us to do something, but is significantly more work and more challenging than if they had a public API, for example, if they had some sort of Zapier or make integration will make things just a lot, lot more easier. App number nine, zero practice manager. Ease of use and setup, two. Integration friendly, zero. Client portal and experience, zero. Reporting, one. Team collaboration, one. And value discrepancy, two. A pretty expensive tool, I'll give it that. It actually has a lot of native integrations with like zero apps and things like that. So if that's what you use, maybe it does make sense for you. If you're a zero based firm, of course, it's probably a good argument to use it. We've worked with firms that came to us specifically to help them with some reporting. So I think it's proof that maybe their reporting isn't as useful as it could be. So if you're on it, maybe I wouldn't be pressed to switch out of it if you're not unhappy, but if you're in the market looking for a tool, especially if you're not a CRS firm, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that as one of the first sources to look into personally. App number 10, Keeper. 
Ease of use and setup, one. Integration friendly, one. Client portal and experience, two. Reporting, forget for internal purposes, zero. Team collaboration, one. And value discrepancy, one. For the total score of six or a Z. I'll say this, actually I was somewhat surprised by the score, at least based on what we have, because actually I like Keeper and so does the community. This score might feel unfair because it's a great tool, but keep in mind, I'm judging it as a PM tool, which I think it's trying to grow into. But I think what the score proves is that maybe it's not quite there yet. So for that, I think the score is kind of what it is at the moment. For example, they have reporting for your client's financials and actually it's pretty good, but reporting for the firm itself is kind of not really there. As it relates to the team collaboration features, they have, they recently launched email, still pretty uh, early stage for us to make any judgment on how good is it and what experience other firms are having with it. In my experience, most firms that use Keeper have another practice management tool that they use for that side of the work, the reporting and all of that. Examples might be Carbon Keeper. I know actually a couple of firms that have both of those tools at the same time. I know the one that has ClickUp and Keeper as an example. Again, keep that in mind. I gave it a one in value price discrepancy as was kind of going back and forth because it will depend on your firm. For example, their pricing is client based as opposed to user based. So if you're a low volume shop, as an example, it would be great because if you have 50 clients, but you do $2 million, then you're going to pay for like 500 bucks a month. But if you're like a high volume shop and you're making 600 grand a, month, a year and you have a hundred clients, then, you know, it's going to be a more significant chunk of your revenue to pay for the, for the tool. With that said, let's move into app number 11 iFirm, is of use and setup, one, integration friendly, one, client portal and experience, one, reporting, one, team collaboration, one, and value discrepancy, two, for the total score of seven. So it goes into the C tier. It has a good set of features. It has an API available, although you have to pay for it, which is not necessarily something I'm a fan of. The interface is so-so, the portal is so-so, so decent reporting. Nothing to, you know, write home about, but cover most of the firm's need. And frankly, the price is not bad. Like you're paying, I think, $180 a year for a user and 420 for a bundle of three users. So it's like 15 bucks a user or less what you end up paying for the tool. We have a firm based out of Canada. Actually, they are in the market. Oh, I don't say they're in the market, but they're considering migrating away from it. But at least for the time they've been there, they haven't been particularly dissatisfied, like it's done the job. Let's move into app number 12, practice CS. Ease of use, zero. Integration friendly, zero. Client portal and experience, zero. Reporting, one. Team collaboration, one. And value price discrepancy, one for a total score of three and goes into the crap here. No comments. Every time I see a website and I see an interface that looks like from the 80s and they're talking about hardware requirements, that's a massive red flag that they're in the 80s mentality still. So not a tool that I would at all uh, consider. App number 13, similar tool. It's Ombio. Ease of use and setup, zero. Integration friendly, zero. Client portal and experience, zero. Reporting, one. Team collaboration, one. And value discrepancy, one. For effectively the same score as practice CS. And frankly, for the same reasons. App number 14, Spixy, UK based system. Ease of use and setup, two. Integration friendly, one. Client portal experience, one. Reporting, one. Team collaboration, one. Value to price discrepancy, two. For a total score of eight or a V. Similar keeper is priced by client. So you can have like unlimited users at 129 a month. Although you have a cap on the number of clients you can have. If you have few clients for your revenue, like it often makes a lot of sense. App number 15, tax dome. East of use, two. Integration friendly, one. Client portal and experience, two. Reporting, one, team collaboration, one, value to price discrepancy, one, for the total score of eight or A, B. We've worked with clients that really like it. It's a pretty close system though. It doesn't really make it easy to integrate with. I wouldn't say it's impossible because at least it is it's a cloud tool and there's some RPA and other things that we could do to integrate with it when required, but, and they have a lot of native integrations as well as something they've worked with, but it's a tough system to work with. Let's move quickly from here. Senta is of use one, integration friendly two, client portal one, reporting one, team collaboration one, value to price discrepancy two for a total score of eight or a B. Aero workflow, ease of use and setup one, integration friendly two, client portal or experience zero, reporting one, team collaboration one, value to price discrepancy two for a total score 
of seven or eight. C, cone, that's C-O-N-E, ease of use and setup, two, integration friendly, one, client portal and experience, two, reporting, one, team collaboration, one, value to price discrepancy, two, for the total score of nine. This is actually a venture-backed application that started as a proposal tool, but it's kind of grown to much more than that. And the pricing is like eight or $11 a month per user. I suspect that will increase as they get market share, but at least for now, it's a pretty good deal. App number 19, Levy, ease of use, two, integration friendly, one, client portal experience, zero, reporting, one, team collaboration, two, and value the price discrepancy, two for a total score of eight or a B. Similarly priced to the top guys like the Carbon Financial Sense and so on, but I feel it does offer actually some additional features. And shout out to Jean, the owner, which I've met and had the opportunity to interact with. App number 20, Ligio, is of use, two, integration friendly, one, client portal experience, two, reporting, zero, team collaboration, one, value discrepancy, one, for a total score of seven or a C. Client Hub is of use, two, integration friendly, one, client portal experience, two, reporting, one, team collaboration, two, and value to price discrepancy, two, for a score of 10 or an A. I was actually surprised to see that they've now, I don't know how recent, but they have month and close and categorization features previously like popularized by Keeper. They have very basic integrations, very basic reports, but I definitely see it working like for a small firm that's primarily bookkeeping based. App number 22, Elephant. is of use and setup, two, integration friendly, zero, client portal and experience, one, reporting, one, team collaboration, one, value discrepancy, one, for a total score of six, and it goes into the C tier. And last but not least, FYI, ease of use, we have one, integration friendly, two, client portal or experience, zero, reporting, one, team collaboration, one, and value to price discrepancy, one, for a total score of C, and goes into the C tier. This is actually a tool that's more popular in Australia and New Zealand. We're working with a New Zealand based firms that uses it. If you use specifically zero in Outlook, it's actually not a bad tool. It has also like a two-way sync with zero practice manager for certain projects and clients. It's not super easy to work with for integration standpoint. We were able to pull a lot of data and integrate with other tools because it has some built-in automations. It has an API, it has this happy integration. So allow us to get our job done. My final thoughts, just because a tool has a high score doesn't mean it's the best, certainly not the best for everyone. None of them are perfect. None of them will ever be. It is worth a very simplistic scoring system, as you saw. I certainly avoid the crap tier. At the C tier, there's actually some good tools there that are good at different things that maybe the score system that I laid out didn't cover. In our opinion, though, your practice management system is your core app to manage client work, but you always need a secondary app to complement it. Why? Because because to manage your leads, your opportunities to email your entire client base or text message them or call them, none of these tools will do it well, frankly. So for that, check out my video on the best CRMs for accounting firms. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, stay efficient.